Recording is on. So the last time that we talked, Jesse, I think I was starting to build out some of like uh, the form editing capabilities on Plenty. So yeah. uh, taking some of the work that you were doing with the Code Mirror and the GitLab uh, API stuff, and then just kind of trying to auto discover some of the fields and information that's in the JSON to just give some kind of editing mm -hmm. capability. So I, I'm continuing down that path. Um, I, I It's probably the starter doesn't have too much information. So it probably doesn't look that much different from the last time we talked, but let's take a look at the starter because yeah. I'm, I'm kind of using it on some other client work, but I, that's not ready to be shown publicly yet. So um, mm -hmm. let me share my screen so we can take a look at some of the stuff there and then we can talk about maybe next steps about what we're going to do. Mm. Can you see my screen? Yeah, I can see you. See, okay. see it. Yeah. Okay. So, so yeah. So this is like you know we've already done the off. So we've seen this before. So you have like the the menu at the top, and then there's this editing button. If you click on edit, you you know you get some of these uh, quick edit um, yeah. pieces of information. So if we look at like the code here on the other tab, so a simple text field like this turns into a simple text field that you can edit like mm -hmm. this. Um, something like uh, a, a boolean turns into a true false so that gives us the ability to like take things off a page so if this is just like okay this is the widget there's no customization it's just true or false you can remove it or add to the page same thing with these um little uh layouts like i i did one of these individually so you can turn off like you know just showing the layout or the content or both of those um, so you can do that kind of thing um other things you can do is uh for example, if you came here, um, it tries to auto discover date fields. So, and I've actually noticed some weirdness with this as well, but um, so like this is a this is a date value, right? So um, in the way that we're determining what a date value is, and actually this is different based on Chrome and Firefox, but um, essentially uh, the way I'm determining this is if, and I, I'm gonna have to do a little more processing, but let me just open up the inspector here. Um, if you can do a new, date and the state string counts as a date like this so that, that that returns a valid date then we'll give you a widget um if not so like if you throw something in here that makes it an invalid date then we'll say no it's not but there's i've noticed some weirdness in firefox is a little more strict than chrome but chrome will actually allow um so i do a lot of nonprofit work and believe it or not 501 c3 in chrome it, so in <laughs> firefox is a little smarter this is a valid date um and okay. so is so is a paragraph of text um, and then adding that. If you just had if you had this anywhere in a paragraph, it would turn this into a validate. Very strange. Um, but basically, what I'm doing anyways is so so uh, right now we're 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 taking the string and we're just checking if it's a validate. If it is, then we'll we'll give a date widget like this. And then um, that allows you to then go through and get this little pop-up widget and you can change the date, right? And it changes this here. Um, yep. what I'm doing on the back end, I, I had a lot of trouble with um JavaScript's kind of like date API without adding something like moment.js or any of the other libraries. Um, just, it seemed like, like I couldn't, I couldn't just like um, figure out how to figure out what format the original date string was in and then convert back to that yeah. format. Like it was kind of a pain. Yeah. So what I'm doing right now is I'm, I'm doing some regex to see what date format this is. And then I'm, you know, check if it's valid date, then I'm giving you the widget and then I'm converting it back. So it should allow for other types of date formats. And, and Chrome would be a better experience because Chrome supports a lot more date formats than, um, than uh, Firefox. But let's, for instance, let's just say we did uh, a two year format instead of a four year format. Um, Firefox supports that. So then you can go through here and you can switch these and it should keep your display at whatever your original date string is. So, oh. um, what else? I'm actually not sure. I think I guess, Firefox. I guess the most important thing about date is that it supports the standard uh, standard date. So ESO standard format. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Yeah, so that's what we... So this and, converts... And Unix, Unix uh, second since the 1970. Yeah, exactly. So I think this this actually converts because the, the date widget needs it to be in the, the ISO standard. So I mm -hmm. think we what I'm doing is I'm converting it to that. So it's like, you know, year, month, day, I think is the format. But basically in order to get the widget to work and I'm converting it back. But it should like this should support things like, let's see here. I, I'm not sure if I, I haven't done a lot of testing in Firefox, but like Jan 1, 2020, right? So, so this is like yeah. obviously 
you know, it's different than what we we're looking at before, but this still knows Jan one. And then it knows since we're doing this kind of format, we could come over here, Jan nine, we could do it like that. Mm -hmm. um, we could even add in. So Jan nine is Thursday, right? Um, we could say uh, Thursday, Jan nine, something like this. And hopefully I'm not going to make a fool of myself when I, okay. So now you can, you can update it and it'll keep the, it'll keep the day of the week and it'll figure that out for you. So this is now Monday oh. 13th or Tuesday. So it, it can do a lot of, there's a lot of processing kind of month work also. What's up? Month. Can you change the month? Yeah. Uh, so like change the month over here. Yeah. 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 So you can come in here and you could say, okay, we're in February now and we want um, February 19th and now you're on Wednesday, February 19th. So that should work. Um, you should be able to change the year. I mean, you could even change it down here, right? So you can kind of cycle up the yeah. years through like that. Um, and they'll figure out what day of the, the week that is there. Um, you also support some different formats. So like if you want longer dates, you could do like Sunday. So now we're now we're doing the longer day of the week. So we could start doing this. Now it's, you know, Monday. Every time you change it, it'll be the longer date. Um, same thing That's with the month. Really cool. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It's pretty it's pretty neat. It's a little buggy still, but yeah. um, it'll get us there. So, you know, longer month, you can do that as well. And then also um, optional commas, right? So you could say yeah. we want to. We want a comma here, and maybe we don't want one here. A little bit strange, but should support it. Um, you can I guess here. I'll keep that. Yeah. So localization is still not working properly, but uh, yeah, no, exactly. Yeah, there's a lot to. <laughs> yeah, it it's rough. It's it's rough. Um, I I started sinking time like real time into it, and I was like, this is not the best use of time. Uh, it's cool. Yeah. Uh, it's nice in some ways, but some ways it's it needs a little work. So um, again, I need to fix the um, I need to fix the the date formatting Chrome to like to to actually deny things that Chrome will allow as dates that just yeah. aren't dates. Um, so I'll do that at some point. But anyways, that's that's where we're working there. Um, if, if, things... I would, if I would uh, code in a date. In, in mm -hmm. data, in data, mm -hmm. then I would use either ESO standard date or Unix date. But mm -hmm. yeah, and then at at layout, and yep. then from the template get the uh, format. Exactly. So yeah, you, like in the data source, you should have the the standardized date, and then in the in the layout. So think about that. I, I totally agree. I I guess it was um thinking of people who are getting so so basically my kind of vision for this is right now um, obviously uh someone could design this without a lot of thought right like they don't have to put a lot of thought into the json and i, and I want to handle as many cases as they can to make it usable and then i'm thinking in the future potentially they might be pulling this json from apis um, or something and so instead of making them process this when they pull it they could get the date in whatever weird format you know within reason we're not going to handle yeah. every date format but they could do that in some kind of strange format and still get a functional editing display um, experience. Mm. But um, yeah, no, I totally agree. Like there's something about, like right now we're allowing you to kind of non-standardize your, your code, right? And then we're trying to fix it um, versus having some standardization. So there's definitely different approaches there that that could make sense. Um, yeah. But I agree with you. Yeah, consistency is good. Like you should be you should be doing this on the display, right? You should be doing this formatting in your template. You should have a standardized date format. And then in your template, you should be doing this instead of thinking of this right now as a string, like we're thinking of it as a string and we're just displaying a string, right? And then we're adding this magic on top of it. So yeah, I, I, I agree with you there. Um, Hello. Uh, Unix timestamps are a bit difficult because they are just numbers, insert numbers. Mm -hmm. So you detect them. Yeah, that that's a good. So I I think it will handle. Oh, uh, that's actually no. So it would not. So I don't have any way to convert back to. So if you just did like a Unix timestamp, which yeah. um, for people aren't used to, it kind of looks like something like this, right? Like. Uh, so so that that would um. Well, first of all, now it does not recognize this as a date format, so it changes it to a, a regular input field because it can't handle it. Um, but whatever yeah. whatever a valid Unix timestamp is, um, so uh, it would appear here like this, but then if it did appear as a valid date format, we would not be able to convert it back once you start changing it. So, so yeah. again, this, this comes into where I think I have to add another. So instead of just checking right now, um, right now I'm building the form saying, is it a valid date based on Java, uh, yeah. you know, based on uh, Chrome or Firefox handling of that? If it is, I'll give you a widget, but I think I have to do a little more processing and say, hey, is it a standard date according to these browsers? And do I know how to convert it back? If not, then you're just going to have to handle it as a regular string. 
um, and and then you just lose your date picker. It shouldn't change your your experience with how it, it prints or how you process it on the page. It's just going to change how your date picker works, basically. Yeah. Um, yeah. So that's that. Um, the the other thing that's kind of going in here is the the um, handling of arrays. So basically, the idea of an array, and this is only partially kind of complete at this point, right? So um, if we find an array in the data like this, then what we're going to say is like, these are components that need to be um, uh, movable and editable, right? So each one of these items in here, uh, which can be varied. So right now we just have an array of strings. This is probably not the editing experience we'd want for a section like this. This would probably be better in like a, a, a bigger WYSIWYG section that actually has like, you know, pair, wrapped paragraph uh, elements or break tags or something like that, right? That, that's probably a better experience. But for now, um, this is an array of uh, elements. So we have this um, section, this gets pulled out into these uh, reorderable components. So for instance, like this first section here says meet our mascot, right? And that's this top one here. You can see it corresponds to that. We can grab this and we can we can change it with other things. So you can reorder it. So now meet our mascot second. You, know, you can bring this down to the bottom, bring it all the way back to the top. Uh, you could use these little arrow um, widgets to switch the order of it. If uh, for whatever reason, the drag and drop, you know, sometimes these things are wonky, um, isn't working. And then you can also come through here. You can edit it so you can click, you know, you can come in here, meet, you know, meet the planarian. Um, you can edit these other sections here. Um, like coming, really, whatever, whatever it is, right? Um, yeah. So you have these sections and you can also uh, remove sections. So you can come here and you could just like X out of them uh, and, and make them smaller. Um, now, of course, there will need to be a way to add new ones, right? So say you've, you've got rid of some of these. So um, at some point, we'll have to have defined lists. So this comes to things where I think, you know, people will have to define things in and above what is currently there, right? So um, uh, somewhere we'll have to come through and make sure that we can define like what kind of things we want to put in here, right? Because this could be more than just a string. Like, for instance, let me yeah. um, let me go to the home. There's a, 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 a an example over here, right? So this is... Uh, uh, an example where, we're, again, we have the same body section, which is an array of elements that should work pretty similarly. But then we have an array of objects, um, the ball and the block, right? So we could come here. First of all, this is more visually fun to watch. So you can like reorder these things. So you can put the, the block above the ball uh, or you can put the, the ball above the block. Um, and then you can edit these things too. This is going to actually give a little bit of a uh, a problem. But let me um come here and let me just change this real quick to ball, ball. So, you know, you could do two balls. Um, like that instead of, you know, uh, a ball and block. But this this does have some challenges with reordering. So having multiple of the same components on the same page now right now is a challenge, um, but that'll be something that we can fix in, in future iterations. Um, yeah, oh. but essentially, yeah, that's the, that's the idea. And then you can get rid of one of them if you want to, like that. Yeah. Um, but yeah, so that's where things are at. Um, I think there are... In terms of next steps, there's three sections that I'm thinking would be good to focus on. And again, like this is kind of where things are going to get a little messy and I don't want to step on each other's toes um, because I, I think basically like when inspiration hits you, you should run with it just because time is limited in the day and you should not have to work on stuff that you don't want to work on. So yeah. I, and, I'm, and I'm the same way. Right. So I think like if you you know have capacity and you want to pick up some of these things, uh, just shoot me a, a quick like drop me a quick line and in, in uh, yeah. discord or something like that so we can make sure we're working on the right things. But I think the next, uh, one of the next steps is we have to bring this publishing workflow, um, basically uh, make it so it's not tied just to this editor, but uh, we can reuse it for this as well um, and yeah. have that tie into everything with, uh, you know, right now this is all obviously bound to the JSON uh, uh, content object. So um, it should be able to just be submitted just like this is. I don't think there'll be too much more difficult between these two, um, but we have to abstract this to be used across both. So I think that would be pretty, Pretty quick. Is that your sense too with how this is set up? That that would yeah. be pretty quick to have tracking. Okay. Yeah, it it would use the same uh, variable as the page co content, so it would be easy to add add the button to the other form or or outside the uh, tabs also. Mm -hmm. Would it be? I, I don't know. Would it be in in the view of the tab or outside of the? Tab uh, thing? <laughs> I would for now, I think like I, I would just put it at the bottom of the tab, like just like kind of like it is here, just like at the bottom, yeah. like just put it way at the bottom. We can think about the like there might be things we want to do in the future, like indicators yeah. in the main bar or whatever. But for now, I think that's like the standard. Okay, here's a form at the bottom is where you submit the form. 
Um, and that might be good enough for now. Yep. Um, so yeah, so, okay. So that's something that needs to be done. Um, um, the other thing I'm thinking, um, you know, it'd be great if we had some kind of media browser capability. And I've been thinking about this stuff a little bit more too, um, of how we're going to handle this stuff. Um, again, with the discoverable aspects of the CMS, I think it's nice because, so, so it, it's a, it's a mixed bag, right? So there's mm. things that are challenging with, um, and when I'm saying discoverable CMS, you, you kind of know what I'm talking about, right? It's like, okay, you have JSON and we're trying to figure out your editing experience, right? Um, it's nice because I, I have a couple other sites I'm working on and like, I didn't have to do any CMS setup, right? Like I just, as we're building out the CMS, I just go to the site and when I log in, I have an experience and that's pretty fun to watch. Um, and especially cool when you start nesting these components, like the experience is, it, it's pretty neat. Um, mm. so, um, so, so I, I think the, the discoverable CMS is nice where it falls flat is things like, um, okay, you know, converting between fields, right? So if you have like a field like this and then it becomes long, it goes to this long text field, right? And then, or if you go this, it goes short. Like that experience is a little wonky. So eventually we might want to have some kind of indicator. Like if you're switching between fields, like if this was previously a short text, it's going to a long text. We might want to have a little pop-up before it does it and saying like, hey, like we're, 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 we're thinking you're trying to go to another field. Um, do you actually want to do that? Or do you want to keep this as a short text or whatever yeah. it is? Um, that, again, that's just dreaming stuff. That's not something we have to implement right now. That is pretty low priority, but that's, you know, one of the things I'm thinking is kind of, wonky with this whole idea of a discoverable cms um yeah the other thing is handling images right so for instance um and i don't have any good examples of an image on here but, but let me just show an example so uh, an image path is usually something like this right so it's usually assets um and then it's something and then it's dot a file name like a JPG, so it's so something along those lines, right? So this would be a pretty easy regex. Um, you know, you could say if we have a string starting with assets like this, or or assets like this, because sometimes we have you know the base URL stuff, um, and it ends with a dot file name of some sort, and we could have a defined list of here. And then we might want to do something like, okay, well we have an assets folder. Um, Take a look. Well, we only have one file on this in this particular website. It's the the logo here. But like you could go through here, um, and it could give you some kind of browser on that information. So so first of all, like you know, it'd be nice to have the media browser to look through all that. But also like if someone were to put that type of thing in their um, in their uh, file source, oops, whatever you know you know what I'm trying to do here. Um, then basically we could turn this into a file uploading widget um, slash browser that could, it could tie into the media browser. Again, this is uh, more just dreaming with you than something we have to implement today. I think for now, the best thing would be thinking, okay, what does this media browser look like in general? Like if we were to go this and it's to just search through the assets folder um, and all that will be public. So we have to think through HT access type impl implications. Um, I don't think for now we're going to handle any kind of private images or anything like that. It's all going to be public. So, you know, how, how would that look if we had this media browser working? So um, I have a mock-up here uh, for for now. Like if there's, if, if you wanted to work on something like this, you know, just getting it to print any of the assets to the page in any manner would be fine. Um, and then we could think about styling and, and, and stuff like that later. But that's the next kind of like big thing I'm thinking here, right? So figuring out this media browser workflow. Um, does that make sense? Yeah. Uh, uh, I wanted to say in between that I got the idea for the form, the content editor, visual content mm -hmm. editor. Yep. Uh, maybe we could, uh, for the auto discovering, it mm -hmm. would suggest, uh, suggest like content types or um, content, yeah, content types, field types. Yeah, for like the, like the component types? Yeah. Exa that's another but thing that I thought as well. So, right, also them to the uh, content types, the blueprints. Or ex ex exactly. So, so that's another thing I was thinking. So, um, I, I, you're you're right on the same page with me, Jesse. So, and maybe and, and maybe there's a difference between your vision and my vision. Let me just like explain kind of what I was thinking here, right? So, um, in this obviously these things they fall flat when you get into heavy editing. So there, there needs to eventually be a way to, like we had talked about, overriding the CMS experience and saying, I want this field with this options always, no matter what the content source below it says, right? So there has to be a way to do that eventually, or people will find frustrations. But for now, to give you a quick editing experience, I, I think you're right. So like, for instance, let's go to um, this page again, right? So we have 
this data source where we have some strings here, and then this one has um, components of a certain sort. So if you were to come over here, what it would, what I'm thinking it would do is it would look at your underlying um, sources within here, and then it would allow you to copy those again. So there'd be a button somewhere, you know, at the top here, like a plus icon or below, like add another component, something along those lines. And then what it would do is it would give you the options to add things in the format that are already listed there. So you could add another block or another ball along those, those type lines. Mm -hmm. um, because like, it's like, well, cause you know, what's the easiest way to figure out what goes in the section, the easiest way, the easiest way, not the, probably the most robust way, but it's to look at what's already in there. Right. It's like, okay, these are the things that are in here. We'll give you more of these. And, and for this top one, it won't let you add, um, uh, uh, an object, but it'll let you add a simple string because everything in there right now is a simple string. Um, so you could do that kind of thing. And I'm thinking that might be a good kind of first step to allow you to add more. Of course, if you go through and you do something like this, and you delete them, then you no longer have it it discovering anything, right? Because it's just a, an empty array at this point. And then you lose the ability to also add, which is, you know, probably not what most people want. And I could see people getting into a, an experience where they deleted their stuff and now they have no ability to add. But again, for for the discoverable side of things, to give you something quick that kind of works out of the box, that might be a good kind of compromise. Is that kind of what you're thinking along those lines? Yeah. And it, it could be somehow edited the content type the type could be edited yeah. somehow in the editor yeah and so, saved to the blueprints yeah okay yep and that so that's the and i think that's like the the next the better yeah. step right so so my, that what i just talked about there is like the first step of giving you some some ability to add additional components right but it's it's limited the next step is what you're talking about i think where there is a blueprint and this is exactly you know the the ultimate vision that says hey these are the defined list of things that go in here. It doesn't matter if they're there now or not. Like you could have it, you could delete all your stuff in there. So you currently look like this, but it would still have a, a, a addition, you know, like a plus icon or an add new component icon that has that defined list of components. And that that's kind of like the next step, I think, where you're, you're kind of defining that experience outside of the discovering um, aspect yeah. of things. Yep. And I think that will definitely be a necessary step at some point. Mm. Um, yeah. And then, so other things we, we had talked, uh, again about like the adding, uh, ability. So this is, again, this is kind of like going through everything in like the content folder. Right. So, uh, what is, where is that? Um, maybe that, oh, that's not, that's not gonna work. Um, yeah. So somehow it has to discover all the different, uh, content types. Right. So it's whatever's in, um, SBA ejected content.js so whatever you know whatever types are in here it has to discover that at some point um so we'll have to we'll have to figure out a way to do that so, so basically if it's you know if it's uh one of those um folders right so in here um so if it's uh sorry content um if it's one of these folders here so uh, basically, we're going to ignore the single type. So anything that's a file, you can ignore. But but um, folders mean that there could be more of these types. So um, you know, allow basically plus blog or plus pages. And then again, it has to look to some blueprint to figure out what the the base uh, JSON structure is, right? Because there's no reason you can have this similar uh, JSON structures within these. Um, but basically, uh, you got to start from somewhere, right? So um, so yeah, basically that's a. That's what we have to do there. So I think having, you know, ability to add more of those. Again, I would say probably let's look at media maybe before we do that. Um, and then the other thing that I want to think about is the local editing experience. So this kind of goes back to um, right now we're saving all this to um, uh, GitLab, which is the ultimate goal. And I think that's great that we're there. I'm super psyched about that. But there should be a local experience where when I make this, you know, if, uh, an edit here and I say, welcome to my plenty site when i do that and i save and i'm on my local host this should be aware because there is a um there is a check to know if you're on local or not um so if it knows you're on local then this publishing should actually write back to my local environment and not write to gitlab and that allows me to do some testing some saving and then maybe i want to track those changes and push them up but i also might want to discard them with git so that gives me the ability to do something like that and just showing that that um check so there is ejected 
environment.js, something along those lines. So, you know, it, there is a, there is a magic variable that tells you if you're on your local or not. So yeah. um, we're on our local is true, then we can do that kind of thing. So that's, that's another thing that um, I would like to do. And uh, Netlify CMS, um, I'm not gonna be able to find, I haven't looked it up in a while, but they, they actually have this because I've, I've used it before. Um, they have a way to save locally. Um, so we could look into what they're doing there. Again, I don't think I'm gonna find it right now with this search because I'm not actually sure exactly what the, the thing is called, but we can find that at some point. Um, might be this. Uh, Anyways, so yeah, that's where things are at. So I think, you know, big things, um, well, you know, first one is getting the publishing, working on the the visual form. I think that will be pretty quick. Um, thinking through how we can actually start cycling through some of our assets that are in our assets folder through, our, through a media button here. Um, that's another thing. Uh, eventually, probably a lower priority maybe is adding the, the different content types, although that would be important. Um, and then just local editing are, are kind of the big things. So I would say, if there, are, if you have capacity at some point and you want to look through some of the stuff, then um, mm -hmm. yeah, just drop me a line and say, "Hey, I'm thinking about taking a stab at this," and then that way we're not like doing the same things um, because I know. Yeah. Uh, yeah, there's somebody moving forward. But yeah, does that does that all make sense? Makes sense. Yeah. Cool. You still have screen sharing. Oh, I'm still screen sharing. Ah, oh, it doesn't doesn't seem to go off for some reason. Let me. Um, did you have any more comments you want for the recording, or should I just stop that? Now? I think that's. Oh, no, I, I got the priorities priorities here and all the tasks that Sweet. cannot be done can can be done yeah yeah <laughs> hopefully, <laughs> hopefully. <laughs> yeah yeah all right I'm gonna stop the recording then thanks.